on your own podcast, you sort of said that, uh, I, th- I think it was when you were talking about the lockdown and saying that, you know, it wasn't that big a deal for you uh, because you're a bit of an introvert. Now, I find introverts are pretty uncommon in the coaching industry. Most of them, uh, you know, really sort of gregarious, like being around other people, get a lot out of it. But I'm an introverted coach as well. Um, and I'm sort of wondering what your experience of coaching is like as an introvert when so much of it is about people and developing relationships and being around other people. It's something I've just had to get better at. It was something I decided this is what I want to do. I knew that was going to be the hardest. That's probably been the hardest part about for for me personally in terms of coaching, like developing more confidence and, yeah, just developing that self-confidence and those communication skills to be able to do what you need to do working with what you've got as well, like accept. I think a big part of it is accepting, okay, I'm not extroverted like a lot of coaches who like to be in front of everyone and yell and scream and make lots of noise. Like a cheerleader. Yeah, exactly. So you kind of like – and that's another thing in America. Like they're big on like coming to the gym, you have to be big energy, you have to be yelling out, you have to be making noise, has to be doing all these types of things. And I was like, that's just not me. No. And I think – I mean, I almost wonder whether it's – counterproductive because it's sort of it's it's almost you know like if you're getting ready for something and you've got like massive amounts of supplementation and help and all that sort of stuff but when you do the thing you're getting ready for if all that stuff's gone then you really haven't trained at all in the environment in which you want to perform you're like no no, i want it like it, sh- it should be in your head i need to find a you need, want that person to be able to self-motivate and not be dependent on external factors for their success yeah, definitely. But over there, that was just the environment they wanted in the gym. They were like, they they said, they, we need it to be high energy. We need you to be upbeat. We need you to be positive. We need you to be making noise. We want these guys to be up as up as possible when they come into the gym. So that was just the way they did it. So just had no choice. Just kind of had to do it the best way, the best you could. Have you like carried that on? I mean, I, I certainly. I mean, I, I don't. When I see coaching. At real fit, I don't see you as like you know low energy or downbeat, but you're certainly like not loud and jumping around and all of that sort of stuff. No, nah, and that's just something you just learn over time. Like I kind of alluded to before, is being aware of what you are. So just accepting the fact that you're not that person, and then finding a way to like you still have to get out of your comfort zone with it. Don't get me wrong, but it's about finding a way to make what who you are and what your skills you've got work. So that's kind of finding that balance between how do I do this, but doing it my way yeah because i mean it's not necessary i sort of worry that people think an introvert is a synonym for antisocial that you don't like other people or you don't like interacting with other people um but i find that's rarely the case um but yeah it is uh, like i mean for me the, the most difficult thing for me was the selling aspect in the private sector um you know especially for like you know making income doing personal training sessions and that sort of stuff it was just super uncomfortable for me yeah you're right and you're right about the you know like introverts not necessarily being anti-social or not liking people so i find like if i get one-on-one with someone like i'm fine like yeah. In that environment, like I love sitting down one on one with so like this sort of situation, having a chat, and then coaching someone one on one. That sort of stuff's awesome. It's just um, you're right. Then the stuff where you kind of have to put yourself out there a bit more. That stuff is not. That's not something that comes naturally to me. I'd rather just do what I got to do and not have any limelight on me and just go along. But it's just in doing this job, you just can't do that. Yeah, you and it is something that you can learn. And I, and I don't mean learn in the sense that, like, you fake it. Like, it's it's genuine. But like you were saying, you sort of – you have to find a way to do it within the boundaries of who you are. And part of that, I think, is to just do it and be uncomfortable for a little while. And then, you know, once you've got that – well, so it's almost like, you know, when you get practical experience with coaching, you just got to sort of do it and see how it plays out and then sort of make adjustments from there. You're right. And a lot of the fears you have around it are just illogical anyway. Like yeah, you start doing it and you realise, I don't even – what the fuck was I even scared of? Like, yeah, you sort of catastrophize and make it out to be a bigger problem, you know, than it actually ends up being. And then yeah. once you recognize, but if you recognize that you've done that, it can make it easier down the road. You're like, well, it wasn't that bad last time. Maybe it won't be as bad this time. And it gets a little bit easier after you take that first step. 
No, nah, definitely. And I think a big part of it is the fear of the judgment of other people. But from what I've found, like my, 90% of people are really supportive. Yeah, people are much nicer than you think they're going to be when you're sort of thinking about it in your own head. Yeah, you start putting yourself out there and you find most people like, oh, this is really fucking cool, good on you. Yeah, I was like I was listening to a, a, an interview with Simon Sinek the other day and he was ta- the guy was asking him, you know, like aren't you like super nervous and scared when you go out and do a TED Talk or something? He's like, no, because th- the audience is rooting for you. Like people – especially like if you're coaching them, they don't want you to fail. They want you to be good. It's in their interests to want you to be good. Yeah, exactly. Especially if you're someone who's essentially giving out free information. Like, yeah, it's very hard for people to bag you when you're just giving out free information. Yeah. And then there, there are still people who determined haters. There are still people like that who will just for no reason at all, it seems just send negative feedback your way. But and being an extrovert won't protect you from that. No, 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 not at all. Probably makes it worse. Yeah, probably hurt you more. But that's also something you just get used to. Like eventually it just stops. Like the first couple of times you hear negative stuff, you're kind of like, oh, that sucks, that hurts. But then you just get more used to it. You just realize it's just part and parcel of life. And, and it's you, not as bad as you think it's like, you know, you nah. look at it and go, is it going to matter in five years? No. No way. And often these things, like you, I'm not saying just – dismiss it because sometimes it might be some merit to what people are saying yeah. but a lot of the time I find it's coming from people who are in not a great place themselves so you kind of keep that in mind as well so you kind of be compassionate to that person as well but yeah it's like you're saying you just do this stuff and then you start to get used to it and you just get better at dealing with the outcomes and it just becomes second nature almost eventually mm-hmm.